personally in your life, what is one of the biggest battlefields? What is it? It's your mind, isn't it? It's your mind. You know what keeps a lot of people, you know that's what one of the big things keeps a lot of people lost? It's what they think. What kept the children of Israel from going into the land of Canaan? Yeah, it's what they believed. Amen. They didn't believe that God would deliver them. Right? If you have your Bibles, turn with us, book of Isaiah. So I want to read one verse there. Book of Isaiah, chapter 26. Verse 3 says, are you there? Anybody believe the word of God is true? <laughs> it says, thou will keep him in perfect peace. Anybody like perfect peace? Hmm. Guess it is how it is. Whose mind is stayed on thee. On thee. Who's he talking about? Talking about the Lord, right? In other words, if you, whose mind is stayed on the Lord, he said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. Why? Because he trusteth in thee. His mind is in perfect peace because, okay, we got this going on in my life. You know what? God, I trust you. I trust you, Lord. I trust you with this situation. I trust you with this circumstance. I trust you with this giant little David that's standing before me. <laughs> I trust you. I trust you, God, with this mountain that I've got to climb. I trust you. I can keep my mind in perfect peace. And man, what's the opposite if somebody's mind that is not in perfect peace? It's just torment, troubled, tore all to pieces, falling apart. Amen. And why do they do that? Because they're not trusting in the Lord. Amen. That's not my words. It's the word of God. I'll keep your mind perfect peace. That trust that stayed in on thee. On thee. So I want you to see that. I want you to see where that. Because we want to look at how that, how, how that works. And it's in Psalm 1-1. Let me get some of these scriptures out so we'll get into this, okay? It says, Blessed is the man, we read this Wednesday night. Yeah, we're going to read again tonight. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. They don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, their mind is not on the thoughts of ungodly people. That's not where their mind is because your mind is on the ungodly and the worldliness and all this stuff. Your mind is not going to be staying in perfect peace. They'll keep you tore up all the time. You don't believe me, watch the news all the time. <laughs> Person just sits there and watches the news all the time, amen. Your mind is not going to be in perfect peace. Amen. You know why? Because it, it, mm, I get ahead of Here's that. He, <laughs> nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful. Here it is. But his delight yeah. is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, here's what he does, doth he meditate day and night. In other words, it's just like if we go to the Ten Commandments, it says, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any grave. Take that scripture and think on it. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What's that mean? Lord, what's that mean? And maybe you'll connect it with another scripture and you'll think on that. I've got one Lord. I've got one God. That's good. 
And you sit there and you ask God and you talk to God and you medit you're meditating on it. You're thinking about it. That's what meditating is, is thinking on it, pondering it, rolling it around your head, right? Putting it, putting it right there and your, your thoughts are toward that, toward that word. It's not toward, let's see, what am I going to eat tomorrow? <laughs> see what I'm saying? It's at that moment, your thought is on the word of God. Your thought is on God. That's what meditating is. Meditate not crossing your legs and burning incense and humming to somebody. <laughs> now we, we laugh about that because it is funny. But you know it's coming into the churches. It's sad. I'm warning you about this too. God's warned you. Hey Amen. They're even called a Christian meditation. But they don't want you to meditate on the Word of God. They want you to empty your mind. <laughs> Nowhere in the Word of God does it say to empty your mind is meditating on the Word of God. Nowhere. Hey Amen. As a matter of fact, I wrote some of them down, can I tell you? He, he tells you all kinds of stuff. He says, meditate on His statue. Meditate on his precepts. Meditate on his word. Meditate on his works. And it goes on and on. Amen. You keep thinking on these things and you keep pondering these things. You don't empty your mind. <laughs> there was a man in the book of Luke, I believe. It seems like hey, this has been going on a long time, you know. He, he emptied himself. Anybody remember that? <laughs> yeah, he was empty. The old, the old evil spirit went out. Brother Jeremy and this man was empty. And the spirit came back and found it empty. It's in Matthew and Luke. Swept and garnished. And guess what? He brought seven worse with him. <laughs> and the latter part of that man was worse than the beginning. Praise God. So see... You don't want to empty out your mind. <laughs> Matter of fact, you want to fill it up. <laughs> you want to fill it up. He tells us, know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. All right? So you already, when you get saved born again, you have somebody living inside of you. And it should not be the adversary, a demonic, presence, it should be the Holy Ghost. Praise God. It should be the Spirit of God. And guess what the Spirit of God is going to do? He's going he's to tell you empty your mind? No. He's going to lead, guide, and direct you and teach you and, and help you to understand the Word of God and help you to, He's going to give you a desire to take in the Word of God. He's going to give you a desire to be in God's house and to worship God and to praise God and to glorify it because that's what the Bible says the Spirit of God does. It will exalt Jesus Christ. Praise God. And we'll worship the God in spirit and truth because it's the only way you can worship Him in spirit and truth. So God wants us to do these things, to meditate. Yes, He wants us to meditate, but He wants us to meditate on Him. And I've heard the old saying, and it just, <laughs> it's an old saying, but it, it, it's, it's wrong, it's, it's false. Anybody ever think Jesus was heavenly minded? Was Jesus heavenly minded? He's about as heavenly minded as you can get, wasn't he? He's heavenly minded about everything. But there's a saying, and I can't stand it when people use it. He said, there, and it says that there's, they say that uh, they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. That's what the devil would love you to believe. Amen. He don't want you to be heavenly minded. Because that's just, that's silly. You can't be heavenly minded enough. Was, was Jesus any earthly good? <laughs> yeah, glory to God. Amen. He was a lot of earthly good. Amen. You wouldn't be here saved and born again unless Jesus threw him. That's the only way you do it. 
So you will be earthly, do earthly things that will be good and edify in God's kingdom and still be heavenly minded. I'd rather be heavenly minded than earthly minded any time. Amen. I, I want to do this. Amen. I, my mind, I want it to, you know, some people think their mind kind of empty. Well, fill it up. How do you get that peace? How do you get that peace in your mind? You fill your mind up with the Word of God. You, you put other things. You get it in there. You get Jesus in there. You get the Holy Ghost. You get God the Father. You get, hey man, the precepts and the statues and the working of God and all these things. And just keep putting them in your mind. Hey Amen. Keep building it up. It's like a room. Praise God. Hey man, just fill it up with God's Word. Praise God. Fill it up with His ways and fill it up with His goodness. Fill it up with His mercy. Fill it up with His wrath. Even. Praise God. Amen. The fear of God. Praise God. Fill it up with that. Praise God. And let your mind be stayed upon Him. Amen. When you, when you get in trouble, praise God, or something that's bothering Him, go to the Word of God. Meditate on His truth. Praise God. I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's all right. Amen. God wants you to know these things. How many knows God wants you to know the Word of God? One of the hardest times in my physical life and the medical time that I was in. I don't know why, but man, I got set up and I told you all this before, I'm going to tell you again. Anybody ever do, uh, they had to do a stress test. That was the first one I ever done. And said, so we're going to do a stress test on a treadmill. Okay, yeah, I'm all for that. I like walking anyhow. And my sister-in-law, <laughs> she said, that's good you're doing it on the treadmill because that chemical one, man, that just feels like you're having a heart attack. I said, no, it's a stress test on the treadmill. So they come in and they said, you're not doing it on the treadmill. You're going to do it with chemical one. Oh, man. See, and it just set me up. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have to experience Brother Joe a heart attack. <laughs> but I, I went in there and I just kept saying I can do all things. <laughs> I, I reached to the Word. Amen. See, I found comfort in God's Word. Amen. Yeah. Amen, Amen. That's why I found it, to help me through that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. And all other scriptures, and I stood on that Word and Sure enough, they did the chemical one, but it wasn't nothing. <laughs> it wasn't nothing to it. God blessed, but for me, it wasn't nothing. Amen. And I went through it. So, but that was a hard thing. But thank God I had that in my mind because it was troubling me. And, and in a moment, my peace was gone. <laughs> Amen. Y'all been there? Come on. Y'all been there, right? But what helped me was the Spirit of God brought forth to my memory His precious Word. And I was able to find peace in that. And you all found peace in other ways too in your life. Maybe your best friend calls you and says, I don't like you no more. <laughs> oh, what's that thing they do to you now? Defriend you or something? <laughs> what is it? Oh, it's unfriend you. Okay. I don't know. It's, hey, does, that, does that bother you when somebody unfriends you? Does that bother you? Some of them you rejoice in. <laughs> hey Amen. I, I, don't, I don't know. But, you know, some things like that bother you when you seem like you maybe you lost a friend. Right? But what do you find comfort? In the Lord. In the Word of the Lord. Hey Amen. You find comfort. Because, you know, say, He says, I'm a friend. <laughs> that sticketh closer than a brother. Praise God. Hey Amen. So you still got a friend. Amen. Though all your friends leave you. You still got one friend, and his name's Jesus. Praise God. Amen. And it's the one we want to please, isn't it? It's the one that we want to, praise God. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. What a promise. And guess what? I know because of the word of God, Brother Larry, I know that the Lord God Almighty, if he says something, then it's the truth. <laughs> Amen. He is a promise keeper. Praise God. Amen. He, you write it down. Mark it down. If it's any word. Amen. And he says it. Amen. He'll do it. 
You may not do it, and we may stumble at it, but still God will do it. Because His Word is true. His Word is true. Amen. I've got to read this to you. Thank you, Lord. It's in Philippians. Chapter 4, verse 8. <laughs> But I, I'm telling you, this really is trying to, the devil's trying to infiltrate the church. Don't, don't be caught up in that, the, in the labor Christian meditation. It's of the devil. Leave it alone. Because anytime somebody wants you to meditate and empty your mind, run from it, praise God. It's not of the Lord. It is the opposite of the word of God. Don't go there. Don't go there. They've got all kinds of names for it. But it's just setting you up. You don't want to do it. Philippians 4, 8 says, here's, here's what we do. You want your mind in perfect, find perfect peace in this? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Where do you get all these things from? From the Word of God. From the Word of God. He says, These things which ye have both learned, you learn these things. That's what you're doing here. That's what you're doing in Sunday school. You're learning these things, right? And he said, and This is Paul writing to the church. And we'll hit that just in a minute. And perceived and heard and seen of me. Do. And the God of peace. There you go again. Shall be with you. The God of peace shall be with you. And I, I want to point this out because it's trying to come to the church too. I hear it. That Paul's writing is no good. Anybody heard that? Oh yeah, it's it's out there. Paul, yeah, they're they don't want to hear what Paul wrote. They say it was corrupt. So I want you to understand this. But you can ask them, was Peter corrupt? And they'll say no. Peter was great. So here's you here you need to mark this down because it's in Second Peter chapter three verse fifteen. You need to mark this down because it's trying to discredit Paul's writing. And it's also just of the devil. So you don't, you don't want to believe it if you hear it. Because anybody will tell you that, that Peter was right there. And guess what? Peter testified of Paul's writing. I mean, you can't have it both ways. I think Peter knew Paul better than anybody here or anybody in the world today. Right? Wouldn't you agree with me? Amen. And he said about Paul, he said, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother, beloved brother, he called Peter, Paul, beloved brother, beloved, beloved brother, Pete, Paul, also account according to the wisdom given unto him has written unto you. <laughs> also in all his epistles. Amen. So here's Peter testifying of the writings of Paul and how good it is. Amen. Amen. So these things that Paul has wrote, these things that Peter has written, these things that James, God blessed them all to write. All these things and Jesus said, yeah, the red letters we have today, amen, they're all good. Think on these things. Think on these. 
trouble, it's not about if trouble may come. It's, it's when trouble will come. It will come. Hard times will come your way. Difficulty. We can go through them just like I testified to. Came in my life just for a short, short time. Many other things. So, how do you respond in your mind then? How do you respond to criticism against Jesus and the Word of God? How do you respond to people like they say, that never happened? There was never a person by the name of Jesus. Jesus never rose from the dead. Oh, he was just, he's still buried somewhere. He was just a good man. Jesus never said he was God. He did. <laughs> Amen. Not only he said it, but his apostles said it. Amen. All these things, criticisms and stuff, trying to belittle the word of God and, and trying to do that. And you hear it with your ears. Amen. But your mind has to bring to pass what you believe is true. And you're either going to have to settle in your life and in your walk that I believe that the word of God is true. I, I'm not going to believe what you think is true. That's just your opinion. Everybody's got opinions, don't they? That's just somebody's opinion. And they may have a degrees all over the place and claim to be the wisest person in the world. Amen. That's just their opinion. You will still have your opinion. And my opinion is from Genesis to Revelation, it's all true. That's my opinion. And I'm going to take it. It's in my mind. And you're not going to convince me otherwise. You ain't going to convince me. Why? Because I've meditated on the whole Word of God. I've pondered it. And I'm still pondering. You will ponder it and meditate it and roll around your mind the rest of your life and you're still not going to get it all. But I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try to get as much as I can. And every bit of it I find, I like it. It's good. It's what God said in the very very beginning when he created the heavens and the earth. And every day, except for one day, the second day, he said, it is good. Now some of you say, well, I don't remember reading that. You can check me out the second day. He didn't say that. Amen. He said the rest of it, it is good. It is good. Amen. We made man. Amen. That day, on that day. But he did say at the end of it, all things he made was good. <laughs> so that might have covered second day too. So it's, it was good. How many of y'all have discovered the word of God is good? Amen. Amen. And you know, the, here's the thing, Brother Dave. People spend the whole, do all these things as unto the Lord. So you can't tell me your mind can't be on the Lord. Because I know it can't. And it can, it, it's just not on the Lord on a Sunday morning. If that's the only time you get your mind the Lord on Sunday morning, I feel for you. You're missing out. <laughs> Amen. And when people, that's, what, that's the problem, see. Even the children of Israel, why they didn't go into the land of Canaan? Because their mind got off of the power of God and what he had already done. And they started to believe in the lies of the ten spies. They started, their minds started to be on the height of the people. They started to be on the, the, the wealth of the people and the, the military might of the people instead of keeping their mind on God Almighty that, you know, here was the greatest army in the world, Pharaoh, at that time, and he just, we didn't raise a sword and he defeated them. Why couldn't their mind be on that? And God's going to do the same thing to the Canaanites. See, they got to trust in God. And we got to trust in God. And I know if you've been a Christian any time, you can think back and see where God has delivered you already in your life. Not only in physical ways, but also spiritual ways. And there was no way that you could be delivered, but you know that God entered in, God moved in, and God parted the waters, God opened up the door, God blessed you, God healed you. Anybody been healed by God, amen? God healed me of cancer. Don't tell me God can't heal you, praise God. 
I know God can. So I can keep my mind, my thoughts on this God that I know, who is God Almighty. And I can keep my mind on Him. Guess what? I can learn to trust Him. You know, you learn to trust people. It's just not in our nature just to do it. You got to learn to. And over the years, I've learned I can trust God. Abraham and Sarah was in one in their 90s, one almost 100. Learned a lesson that they could trust God. Because He gave them a promise that through their seed, that he would bless them and they would be a, their seed would outnumber the stars of heaven or the sands of the sea. And that hadn't come to pass. I mean, a lot of you, yeah, 90 years old, almost 100, you probably think, well, that's past. <laughs> God told us this was going to happen, but it didn't happen. Oh, well. But at that year, age, Sarah became pregnant with Isaac, brought forth her firstborn son. They found that God was faithful and they could trust Him in their life. And as you go through your Christian walk, you're going to find that you can trust God. And when you come to that place, it makes it so much easier when we come to the place that most of the world dread. We come to that time that we're leaving this world. <laughs> when most, a lot of people are just afraid and scared to death. A person that has trusted and trusted and trusted in God, when they come to that place, I've seen it, I know. I've seen these people at death's door that was children of God. And they had such a peace about them because they have found trust in God. And even because... God, we're not ignorant of what happens after we leave this world because of the Word of God. And I believe the Word of God is true. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. I go away to prepare your place. Amen. And I'll come again and receive you in myself. Praise God. Amen. There's a mansions. Praise God. There's street of gold. Amen. There's a new body waiting on you. Praise God. Amen. And Jesus is going to come and get us. Praise the Lord. Some great and glorious day. Hmm. So even when you come to that place, yeah, there might be a little bit of, you know, I don't know what's going to happen and all this, but I'm still going, I'm trusting you, Lord. <laughs> trusting you. A little bit leery, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> trusting you. Trusting you. That's how. But if your mind is on, it's just taking in worldly stuff, worldly stuff, worldly stuff, worldly stuff. And this lies dusty on your shelf. Your mind's a mess. Your mind's going to be a mess. So you might see people, God's people, man, why you got so much peace? Because my mind has stayed on Him. My mind stayed on Him. Man, I got to have this habit or that habit. No. You just got to have your mind stayed on Him. That's what's going to help you. Is your mind stayed on Him. Peace. Peace. You can't buy peace. You can't conjure it up in yourself. It's a gift from God. And this is the avenue he's blessed for you to do it. This is it. There's people in so much turmoil and trouble. And their life is such a mess. And it's because, all because they don't line their life, their mind, and live it according to the Word of God. Trouble's going to come enough. But you can still have peace in the midst of the storm, as Brock testified already. You can have that peace. But it's His way. It's not your way. 
Diane, would you come pin it, please? You're going to get it his way. And it's, yeah, meditate. <laughs> meditate the right way. Not emptying yourself, but filling yourself. That's your job. That's what the Holy Ghost is telling you to do. So it is up to you to take time to meditate upon this. It's up to you to push back the television show, to push back the Game Boys, and push back all this other stuff that consumes your time, and to take time and meditate and ponder. Not just read it. Think about what it's saying. So many people that get on these games and they're just, or they sit and watch a show for three hours and it's just numb. You don't think on nothing. God wants his people to think. To think about what his word says. Think for it for yourself. I hear other teachers, other preachers sometimes and I like to listen to them. Charles Spurgeon and A.W. Tozer and I hear what they say and I think about, I never thought of about it like that, you know? And it makes me think a little bit more. And then some of them say it and some of them say things and I, you know, no, I don't agree with you on that. I don't, that ain't right. They don't line up with what I know of the Word of God. So you dismiss it and go on. And they might have something else that's good that you do think about. Amen. Does this make sense? It makes sense. Yes, God wants you to meditate on His Word. He does. But do it the right way. Do it the right way. Those who can, would you stand with us? If you don't know the Lord this morning, then you need the Spirit of God living in you so that you too can bring in the Word of God and it can instruct you. The Word can instruct you. Because there's only one way you're going to get to heaven. What's his name, church? His name's Jesus, isn't it? He is the only name given whereby a man may be saved. It's Jesus Christ. That's it. No other way. But how good it is to understand what his word says. How good it is to take it into your own mind. I can't take it into your mind for you. You have to do that. You have to listen to it. You have to look at it. You have to read it. I can't do it for you. God, you have to do it yourself. Your wife can't do it for you. Your husband can't do it for you. Your children can't do it for you. Your mommy and daddy can't do it for you. You got to do it for yourself. Push the time to do it. I mean, it's food for your soul, isn't it, Brother Charlie? It's sweet. It is good. But you've got to make time for it. You've got to make time for it. Don't just beat your time in. Well, I've read my chapter. <laughs> That's not what God's talking about when he says study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of God hey man he wants you to meditate over and over and over he says meditate upon my word meditate upon my word study to show thyself approved study that's what meditating is thinking about it thinking about it thinking about it what's this say what's this say what's this say what's this mean and you'll spend your whole life and you never get it all it's a never ending process. Don't think that you, it gets old. I read it once. That's enough. <laughs> it's the living Word of God. You'll get something out of it every time you read it. If you read it by thinking. Amen. And it's also God speaking to you. God's talking to you from His Word. Where else can you get a conversation like that? You want a conversation with God? Then read His Word. Read His Word. Amen. 
Amen. Anybody else need to come pray? Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. All right. Thank the Lord. Been a good place to be. Thank you all for coming out this morning. I know it's snowy and all this, but uh, come back and be with us. We're going to be here tonight, uh, Lord willing, 6 o'clock worship service. All right. Youth will be gathering in, those who can, at 5 o'clock. So, amen. Look for a great time the Lord tonight. We'll do what, see what the Lord has tonight. Amen. Hopefully this has been a blessing to you tonight. Just encouraging this morning, I mean, encouraging you to, uh, I'm telling you, it is a, there's no better place to go. Amen. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. Amen. Uh, it's good to have you all.